Ja, ich freue mich im Rahmen unseres Hauses der Visionen. I am very, uh, I'm very happy to uh, present in our House of Visions uh, now Harald Kegler, um, whom I know from uh, more than 20 years ago when I invited him uh, to our Global Village Symposium in Vienna. And uh, I was, I was, uh, my attention was drawn to him by my colleagues in architecture who said, you cannot uh, think about uh, the new possibilities of rural or urban development without considering the work of Werkstatt Industrielles Gartenreich. Um, how will you translate it? Workshop Industrial Garden Sphere or something like that. Did you have an English title for that? Um, yes, Industrial Garden Realm. Industrial yeah. Garden Realm. Yeah. So this, uh, this initiative uh, sprung up uh, in the days of change, and the days of hope at mm -hmm. the end of the German Democratic Republic. So uh, shortly before uh, the uh, beginning of its end in 1989. And uh, it was an initiative that was connected to uh, the will to, to reform, so to say, uh, the socialist planning and to, uh, and to give special attention to the wounds that the modern industrial system had created. And uh, I think this is uh, uh, the uh, center of your work. And uh, you have uh, continued to think along uh, these uh, ideas of how can we uh, heal the wounds and how can we make the best use of the land and how can we create a real sustainable condition for human settlement. And uh, uh, today you, you will probably present uh, the outcome of Werkstatt Industrielles Gartenreich, but I should add that you went uh, to the USA and worked uh, with uh, many people there uh, and uh, with universities and also uh, came across like me, <laughs> I had the same I had the same encounter, uh, the same horrible encounter with uh, <laughs> suburbia as the ultimate threat to our urban environment and also to the rural environments, of course. Uh, uh, maybe more extreme in, a, in, in the USA, rural environments uh, are either large industrial farms in the Midwest or they are some remnants of uh, a 19th century culture that uh, that are totally uh, fallen back out of civilization. That's uh, that's an experience that that was horrible. There are little seeds of of uh, of communities that try different ways, but it's still like an archipelago. Um, you came back to Germany and uh, you continued working with uh, uh, the rural regions that some of the urbanists would call the left behinds yeah. <laughs> um, or as you would call them the future regions <laughs> and uh, and uh, you returned to to uh, to uh, the Bauhaus University and finally for the moment ended up in Kassel at Kassel University where you're doing uh, the history of planning and also uh, sustainable regional development so Please, Harald, uh, tell us a little bit more about your work. The floor is yours. So we start yeah, thank you very sharing. much. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting me uh, and come back to our common rules. We met 25 years ago in Vienna. It was a great experience, a wonderful meeting there. And I had a, a lot of um, contacts. Uh, Richard Redges, uh, one guy we met there and it was a fantastic forum to talk on main issues of the transformation of the um, old, I would say, old metropolitan 
uh, areas into um, new little builds. And the, the, um, the model of uh, a new kind of living space could be the village as a, a model for the future. Uh, and that's why I'm interested in the um, rural design issue because it's a chance to change the point of view on the development of our uh, environment and of our living places around the world. Um, the urbanization uh, in the metropolitan areas on the one hand and the incredible suburbanization, the suburban sprawl um, is um, a cul-de-sac of the mankind and we have to change our position and we have to create new instruments and we have to start experiments to try to find new methods, new planning principles, um, new ideas and a new common sense of the development of the future. Um, and I learned a lot on that um, issue in the United States when I arrived on the one hand in Florida. Um, I was so surprised and shocked on the uh, suburbanization from one coast to another coast. There's only sprawl. Um, and when I arrived in Midwest and in Colorado, I saw the wasteland of agriculture. That's incredible. And that could not be the future. And we have to find a way. We started at the Bauhaus with that uh, experiment um, you told us in the industrial garden room in the former old industrial area around Bitterfeld, Dessau and ecological disaster was happened there during the last 150 years. And that's the main uh, message of that uh, development there. You can find similar places around the world. We are confronted with the wasteland of the industrial age. And that's why I'm interested in a new starting points for an, another kind of um, spatial development. And I would like to present you some examples of uh, that work I've done during the last decades. Uh, I was, would like to start with um, my experience I got in, in Florida and in the Caribbean area. We also uh, in touch with colleagues in Cuba. So it's interesting to see both sides of the street of Florida. <laughs> But both are confronted with the uh, consequences of the climate change. And that's a central issue. And then I would like to uh, show you some aspects of the results of the industrial garden room and the new developments there. And uh, finally, I would like to present you an aspect of the new research we do in Kassel with the uh, rural areas and uh, for a new kind of spatial order system. We have to change our instruments and our thinking on the um, development of these areas as a new starting point for, yeah, a big conversion of our surroundings. So I would like to... Please go ahead, share your screen. <laughs> yeah, I hope that will work. Oh yeah, it seems to be. Super. Maybe we so, can even blow it up. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, so it's working good. So new settling. I think it's a fundamental uh, issue. To, we have to think on regions and rural urban structures beyond the metropolitan areas. And that's, I think, the main point. Um, I would like to... Um, tell you something very shortly on these five points. First, climate change issue. Uh, then three um, examples of the experiments I did in Ferropolis, Pistoritz and Freiburg. It's located um, 
nearby Leipzig. So, and then the new spatial order as a model uh, we discussed in Kassel uh, with students. So, um, first, you see the um, that's an example in Cuba. Um, we had a workshop with students from Kassel and from uh, Santa Clara, and we uh, worked on uh, a small town, a small village, a fishing village at the coast of north of Cuba. And you see this picture. 30 years ago, there were gardens, and now it's flooded by the sea. So the um, sea level is rising uh, five centimeters during the last 30 years. And if you compare the in 20 or 30 years, uh, the sea level will increase up to 30 centimeters. And in a hundred years, we can't go to that area. And we discussed with the students and with the local guys, what can we do? How can we change this um, situation and create a new kind of settlement? So, change the other side of the street of Florida, Miami. Miami, the most vulnerable place in the United States because uh, this city, Miami and Miami Beach are only some centimeters above the sea level. And the, the sea level rise can be seen day by day. And if you see the, the right picture, that's the future of Florida in 100 years. So Miami um, will uh, close, <laughs> be closed in 100 years. And um, we have to start, we uh, discuss it with the person of the university, but also of the community, um, what will be the, the future. And they started a public discussion a very interesting roundtable discussion with people, with um, local politics and other uh, people, uh, how to prepare for the new kinds of development during the next decades. That's a very interesting and important point of view. Uh, in the United States, the people are confronted with horrible things of sprawl and uh, climate change consequences, but at the same time, uh, there's a public, widespread public debate, and there are many, many local initiatives, radical initiatives. Um, you told me about your experiences there. Uh, they try to find new ways beyond uh, the sprawl and uh, the uh, cul de sac of the development of their country. And that's incredible. We can learn from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that's the reality of United States. You see, that's Florida from one horizon to another horizon, only sprawl. Um, there are only uh, the highways and parking grounds and shopping malls uh, at the intersections of that. And you see on the right uh, picture, the sprawl uh, is wasting the whole country. Uh, the Everglades were completely destroyed. I flew up uh, via the, the Everglades and you see the, the sprawl is everywhere. And the consequences are, you see the CO2 uh, immutations are increasing. So it is a um, horrible, um, development. And that's why we need alternatives. It's impossible to change the sprawl inside. You have to replace the sprawl by a new uh, kind of urban rural um, development. And that's why we started with the project of the industrial garden room. We started, you told 
as in the late GDR time, we um, had at the Bauhaus in Dessau a lot of contacts to um, Western colleagues. Uh, that was an advantage for the Bauhaus. And we um, had cooperations with colleagues from uh, West Berlin, West Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, Israel, uh, also Soviet Union. In the late 80s, it was not easy to have contacts with the Soviet Union. The, the Gorbachev Soviet Union was one of the enemies of our heads in the Central Committee of the leading party. So um, it was <laughs> an interesting change of our view. Um, yeah, and we created uh, that um, model for an alternative of the uh, industrialization of the region. You see uh, the uh, places, Bitterfeld is an ecological disaster, many open pits of the brown coal industry, the chemical industry, power industry, it was a wasteland at all. And we started these 16 projects to initiate a change of view and a change of real development. And uh, the leading project is Ferropolis, number 16. And I would like to um, show you uh, that experiment. We call it Ferropolis, a city of iron um, on industrial wasteland. Uh, these huge machines are the instruments of the industrial age, the dino, dinos of the past. And we said these are not only dinos of the past, but they are, these are also resources for the future. It's, uh, we call it grey energy, and we can protect these machines and transform these machines into new chances for a kind of new development. So at the edge of the open pit, um, we, together with the former miners and with um, other colleagues and with the politicians, we started that project. It was incredible. Begin of the 90s, it was an open window, window uh, for, the, for new experiments in Germany. Now the windows is step by step be closed because the bureaucracy is high developed, etc. And it's time for a new change. But that's another story. And uh, Ferropolis is also a symbol for possibilities for a new kind of um, creativity and for the foundation of new kinds of settlements. So that's why I'm interested in your initiative of rural design, and that could be a new type of place. Um, if you see uh, the, the water, that was the open pit. It's an artificial lake. And Ferropolis, these uh, five huge machines, were combined to a new ensemble. Inside is a place for uh, different activities, festivals, music, dance, but also theater and art performance. And inside the machines, we start step by step. We started step by step with new kinds of use. Um, Ferropolis was founded um, 25 years ago, officially as a town. And that's um, uh, the first new town um, which was founded in Germany. Uh, after unification, and we are forerunners. And now we want to, we started to um, create a new element in Ferropolis. We said it's necessary, two things are necessary. The first, uh, Ferropolis needs a new impact, an impulse. And that could be the um, educational element. Uh, we are, there are artists, there are um, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, solar energy entrepreneurs, um, 
music, uh, the museum, etc. But a new kind of education should be started there. And on the other hand, we considered at the university in Kassel, we also need a new kind of university. The university, uh, which we know, is part of the old industrial system. The universities are also machines. There's a big machinery to produce people uh, as tools in the machinery. And we have to change the university at all. And the idea is, let's go, let's leave the metropolitan area and go into the rural area, into the post-industrial area and restart the university as a micro-university. Small type of university, um, which can be located at these places in villages or in old industrial places in small settlements and small towns. Uh, not a big machinery. We need, we do not need that machinery. We need some places where we can restart education in combination with a new settlement. So, and in fact, July 26th, uh, last year, there was the first lecture of that uh, university. Uh, you see the uh, seats are reused by, um, I think it was an, an, yeah, from, from a big plant. It was closed and we collected these elements and artists um, built that new auditorium. And this was the first lecture. So it is possible to do that. We have wonderful surroundings. Uh, the students were happy to go there, to have a unique place. You, know, you can find all the issues which we have to deal with. That um, is so brand new that you even see the Corona rules between the seats. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, it's easier to realize that there. Yeah, and we created a, um, a, a new master plan for uh, the next step of the development of Ferropolis. And you see, um, we created new elements. The, uh, in the center, you can see the um, university center with urban gardening on the top of one of these huge machines. Yes. So the, the machinery uh, itself will be transformed, uh, theater and, and other elements you can, can see. And the students can stay there. Uh, there's an, um, a hostel for students also can be integrated, etc. So it's a new kind of campus. And uh, the a village uh, campus, so to say. Village campus, yeah. It's a heart of a new um, village uh, in the in that case, in the post-industrial area, also a new type of rural town, whatever. So, and the, the campus idea, I think that could be an, a special issue for your initiative of the uh, rural design initiative. Yeah? To the, the campus idea could be a new heart of a new village. Actually, uh, there is... Uh, uh an initiative in Austria that was called uh, uh, Village Campus. It's now called uh, Planet Yes. And they were mm. planning to, uh, to conceive new settlements mm. as kind of merging of, uh, uh, of small towns or the edge of mm. small towns mm. um, with special competences mm. Uh, mm. and, uh, and uh, resettle uh, academics there and also mm -hmm. people uh, in the professional sphere and uh, yeah. the village campus would be like a real world lab uh, for uh, for future development so yeah. that learning is not taking place apart from reality yeah. but uh, within a very yeah. fastly changing reality so yeah I think that's a that's a fantastic idea and uh, and another thing that comes to my mind is uh, 
Manuel Castells uh, yeah. is a big name. Uh, uh, he used to be one of the uh, top urbanists describing the global city and its development, like Saskia Sassen did and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and many other people. This uh, dominance of the space of flows and this, uh, yeah. this uh, um, duality that, that, that creates separation in this world. Mm. And Manuel Castells recently became the Minister of Science uh, in mm. Spain, and he <laughs> and he uh, proposed to move a lot of the universities to the empty villages in Spain. Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, that's definitely a, a big issue for yeah. our rural design community. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a new heart. And the, uh, and uh, one more one more association yeah. I have. Uh, there are many friends in the in the so-called uh, transition movement uh, or or mm -hmm. change movement, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, annually at the Pentecost uh, date uh, there is a there is an event uh, called Make Us for Humanity, oh, yeah. and it took place in Ferropolis. <laughs> I don't know if you know that, but it's sought okay. for not only by students and universities, but but by uh, innovative makers by innovative uh, yeah. creators that yeah. want to seek a place to come together. And it's yeah. one of the most inspiring places that could be chosen for a purpose like that. It is incredible. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it could be in um, a forum and it's a wonderful uh, arena for new ideas. Um, if you, you have to come to Ferropolis. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. That's Up to good. now yeah. I have an excuse, but now I don't have any more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we, we want to integrate um, two things in our uh, rethinking of the uh, new kind of settling. Uh, one is the tradition of the workers' settlements of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. And there's uh, a fantastic example, uh, not far away from Ferropolis, near um, Wittenberg. Um, it's called Pistolitz. Uh, this settlement was founded in 1919 as a place, um, you see, as a... Um, live in place for workers of the chemical industry in the background. So, and, but this type of settlement is com what's completely new. It is a type of settlement between village and town. So it's, they created a new kind of um, surroundings and at new places. Um, and we can learn from that place. And I think we can combine the tradition of uh, workers' settlements, or sometimes they call it garden cities, but that's different, uh, and combine that with co-working places based on the, uh, the new technologies of um, internet, etc., PP. So instead of chemical industry or other heavy industries, we can integrate a new type of work of labor uh, in combination with the internet-based uh, possibilities. And you see the, the model of the settlement, um, all elements of a village and all elements of a town were combined. Um, and uh, this is a, a, a small town or big village. Um, there are around 330 raw houses, about a thousand inhabitants. So that's a, a, an optimum of a settlement. And that's the future. You have uh, to talk on optimums of uh, the number of inhabitants and the number of uh, houses and infrastructures we have to combine. Um, These, uh, let me jump in here because uh, yeah. we have corresponded on that. Um, yeah. One of the big, big uh, um, uh, revelations I had was uh, a conference in the same year 
that I started my global village uh, mm -hmm. conference first at the Technical University. There was a conference in the Vienna City Hall called Die Ökologische Stadt. Yeah. And the keynote speaker and the mastermind of the conference was Karl Ganser. Yeah. And he confronted uh, the audience with this idea uh, that like any other organism, cities have an optimal size. Yeah. And even Vienna is much too big. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, that was really that was really shocking, and I think yeah. he was not invited anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it, it 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 left a mark uh, in many brains, including yeah. mine. And uh, yeah. I started to think about what is the ultimate uh, optimal size. Yeah. And uh, I remember I had a quarrel with uh, uh, 1992 with mm -hmm. Paolo Soleri in, in mm -hmm. Arco Santi. Uh, uh, he, was, uh, he, was con co uh, he was convinced that you need at least 5,000 people at a place, you know, that uh, you have yeah. this, what you call the urban effect. Mm -hmm. And then I said, but what if uh, any of those human settlements um, is connected to all the other human settlements and we can we can have any kind of exchange yeah. uh, with the help of these new technologies. And then he became a little bit stubborn and said, no, you're all gonna be hermits, uh, isolating <laughs> yourself in your home. And then uh, I met uh, uh, in 1996, I met a guy named uh, uh, Giuseppe Silvi in, uh, in uh, Istanbul at the Habitat conference. And he presented what he called the Piazza Telematica. Uh, he presented an mm -hmm. urban arrangement, a little square yeah. that, uh, that can bring the power of almost any urban service, including university, library, museum, mm -hmm. uh, you name it, you know, yeah. bring it to a small plaza of a small town. Yeah. So that is, that is really an exciting question. Uh, yeah. how, uh, how are we going uh, to, to conceive the optimum size uh, yeah. and maybe also learn uh, that several of these settlements, uh, when they are urban villages, they can connect to each other and yeah. they can become competence centers, complementing mm -hmm. each other. And I've right. seen these new, so to say, land cities also yeah. Uh, be conceptualized in some parts of the world. So yeah. this is a really interesting subject. Yeah. And it's also interesting. I met Karl Ganser in Pistolitz in that settlement. And he also, in the late uh, 90s, and he spoke on the optimum size. And he said, if you create a new place, you have to go to Pistolitz and learn how to design such places. And I think that's an incredible moment. Yeah, and uh, you can combine it. Uh, the settlement is car free. So you have, you can use uh, the, the, the train, the train station is nearby um, and it's heated by renewable energies. So it's a model you, you can uh, combine. And if you see the, the urban situation, so it's a commonplace, uh, a different a system of um, spaces, uh, public, uh, semi-public and private places, gardens, etc., uh, playgrounds, and uh, the center, that's a school, and the, the playground for the uh, pupil is part of the settlement, it's not separated. So it's an integrated model. Uh, there you see one car, that's the car of the policeman. Yeah, and uh, the second example. Um, I think we can also learn from the Middle Age development because um, we have to create new types of design, how to design a small, a new small town, a rural town, um, what kinds of principles of design we should take into account. Um, and we 
went to that place. It's not far away from Leipzig, Freiburg. It was founded uh, 800 years ago. Uh, that place is still existing at the same place in the same spatial structure. It is a uh, resilient town. Um, and that's why we asked us uh, what kind of principles of design principles they used 800 years ago to create a place which is still existing. And we started uh, the analysis in two directions. On the one hand, we looked for the uh, principles, design principles, that's the founding axis of the city and the geometric principles we analyzed at that place and we published it in, in that um, magazine. And it was incredible for the students. We uh, practiced that. Um, and on the other hand, we analyzed the uh, resources and the local basements for the development. And we found, uh, found it out that uh, the surroundings of that place um, where um, um, offered um, a system of resources which um, can survive this small town up to, to until today. So they have agricultural resources, they have water, uh, they have uh, any other elements which are necessary for the protection and for the um, energy to um, etc for the development of the city until now uh, we were so surprised to find out these elements and the combination of the founding principles the design principles with the uh, elements of the resources in the surroundings can be the starting point for a new settling system yeah and finally um, we brought these elements together in a model for a new spatial order. In German, we say Raumordnung, um, which um, with a new model, we said we have to change the principles of spatial planning. The, Raumordnung is based on the central place model, zentrale Orte system. Of Kristallas, yeah. Kristallas uh, idea. And this idea is still existing until today. And it is a system which, um, or, which is organizing the whole space along a hierarchy of places. On the top is a uh, metropolitan area and on the bottom the village um, and we said we have to uh, change that system fundamentally on the top of the spatial uh, the on, on that um, system must be the village and the rural areas and the metropolitan areas completely dependent on the on that areas so um, and we have to um, found a new um, a new basement for spatial planning. This is not the, the are not the functions of a city, but the ecological footprint and the biocapacity. That is a um, the main uh, basement for our life and for the human development at all. And if we talk on sustainability, we need the biocapacity of a region as the fundamental principle. And we have to create a new spatial order based on the biocapacity of a region. And on the top, and that's the left um, model, the basement is the biocapacity, then the new functions in the, we call it, New Außen, also das neue Außen. Uh, the, the, new out, the new outside. 
um, yeah, the new outside or the former hinterland. Oh yeah, uh, the, the, yeah. the new periphery or the <laughs> the new periphery order. Yeah. The, the the new center, so to say. Yes. Yeah, the new center is a periphery, and the former center is the background yeah. or the hinterland. Is the node, basically, yeah. possibly the node. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and connected by train. That's the the black uh, element. Uh, the uh, we have to replace the car orientation of the uh, society by the train uh, orientation. So it's an also completely change. We have to leave the car age and restart with the uh, train age. So, and we looked at a special region. It's not far away from Freopolis. It's in Brandenburg, but it's not far away in a similar region. Uh, the students analyzed the ecological food footprint and the biocapacity. And then based on that analysis, we started a new regional plan as a new type of central yeah, um, spatial order. And we discussed it with um, local politicians and local initiatives, and they were surprised and uh, were ha very happy. Uh, to find a new future for their hinterland. Um, and they said, that's a reality. Uh, the metropolitan area is completely dependent on our region. We are the, the most important place and not the center of Berlin. Um, and that's why we have to have a new um, view on that area. It was very, very interesting to um, listen to the local uh, activity uh, actors and, and the politicians. Yeah, mm -hmm. and finally, and that's my last picture, we um, started um, a next step of the regional uh, planning process around Ferropolis. We started to integrate these uh, steps I spoke about at the new experimental um, area. Um, I would say this will be a part of the Anthropocene um, to change our industrial past into a new livable future in the Anthropocene based on the developments of rural areas. So, yeah, it's a very important uh, to remark that the concept of the Anthropocene is basically seen uh, as a pure concept of destruction, whereas uh, we uh, we could say that the real Anthropocene will only unfold if we understand man as part of nature, uh, right. and uh, and uh, being able to uh, work and live with nature in a sustainable circumstance. And the other right. thing, uh, this uh, this massive. Uh, um, a mounting of garbage, as I mm. would say, may be the beginning uh, of this force that needs to be refined uh, to be a beneficial force. Right, right. Yeah, it's, I think it's a, the only and the last chance. Um, the Anthropocene could be the last uh, period of the development of the mankind and we have to change the Anthropocene uh, from a way into cul-de-sac to a new livable future. And that could be one of the starting points. And your initiative is also an uh, input into that direction. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a Thank wonderful talk. And uh, hopefully the beginning of uh, reconnecting all the dots as yeah. you have on this beautiful map, uh, we might reconnect our human yeah. map and and combine our strengths to make that future yeah. happen. Yeah, thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you again and to talk on that issue. That's great. Thank you. Wonderful. So I say goodbye and uh, yeah. we talk very soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you in Ferropolis. Thank you. <laughs>